Welcome back Classic Gamers and thanks for viewing Jay the Classic Gamers game review of the 1985 classic game Wrecking Crew by Nintendo for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Wrecking Crew was released as part of Nintendo's programmable series. Nintendo only released three games in the programmable series, Excite Bike, Mock Rider, and Wrecking Crew. This is a one or two player vertical platform game where you play as Mario or Luigi in alternating turns. When you start the game, you start with 5 lives, and when you lose all your lives, it's game over. The object of the game is to get the highest score by avoiding the enemies and clearing as many of the 100 phases as you can. In order to clear a phase, you must destroy all of the gray doors, which take one hit, all of the gray ladders, which also take one hit, all of the light gray brick walls, which take two hits, and all of the gray, dark gray brick walls, which take three hits. Once you have destroyed all these structures in a phase, you clear that phase. The controls in the game are simple. The direction pad moves Mario and Luigi left, right, up, down, and the A, a and B button swings their hammer. There are only five different enemies to watch out for. The red wrenches, these enemies move really slow and are real easy to avoid, but one hit from them kills you. The purple wrenches move a little faster and will kill you with one hit also, so watch out for these guys. The eggplant wizard is the fastest, but they run in a set pattern so you can predict their next move, but they'll also kill you with one hit. Then there's the dreaded fireball, which will appear when you take too much time on the same floor. And we all know what happens to Mario and Luigi when they get hit by a fireball. It ain't pretty. And the last but not least enemy is named Spike. This guy is really pissed off at Mario and Luigi for some reason. All he does is follow you around trying to knock you down to the first floor, which can cause you to die or sometimes results in making the phase impossible to complete. And for these two reasons alone, you will learn really fast to despise this guy. And also, after every four phases, Spike will challenge you to a bonus game. There's a coin hidden behind one of the doors or brick walls, and you must find it before Spike does to receive the bonus points. What makes the programmable series games different from all other games is that they allow the player to design their own levels, which I think is a very cool feature. In the Wrecking Crew design mode, you can create up to four phases and make them as easy or as hard as you want. It's really easy to do, just move to a space and scroll through the objects using either the A or B button. Or you can use the second controller and press a direction on the control pad and press the A or B button. And it will fill the screen up with a particular object. I guess this could be useful as some sort of shortcut when creating phases. You can also name your phase by hitting the start button. Once you have created a phase, hit the select button and go back to the main menu. And you can test out your phase or create another one. There is one major flaw with the design mode. It has a save feature, but this only works if you do not turn the power off to your NES. So you could have spent hours designing a very cool level, only to have it erased as soon as you turn the power off. That's very disappointing. Other than the save feature not really being a save feature, the only other complaint I have is when you play two players, and it's Luigi's turn, he looks exactly like Mario. That's sad that Nintendo didn't take a little extra time to make Luigi's clothes green. Some people might call this an action game, some people might call it a puzzle game. I would say it's a mixture of both. It's fast paced makes it an action game and the fact that you have to destroy certain objects in a certain order on some phases makes it a puzzle game. And that makes this game very challenging, especially on the higher phases. Most of the music and sound effects aren't that bad, but the main music is a little laid back and boring. That is, until you get the magical hammer. Now that music kicks ass. And I also like the music in the bonus stage a lot.
On the title screen, hit the A or B button and you can choose to start off at any phase you want. Here's a cool tip. At the beginning of each level, hit start and pause the game. Then you can scroll up and down and check out the whole level so you can plan your next move. Make sure you make good use of the green doors. Hit the door once when enemies are close and they will walk into it and will no longer hurt you, unless they come back through the door. Also use the bombs to your advantage. Not only will bombs destroy structures next to them, but you can also use them to knock down the enemies, and you sometimes get items for bonus points. And be careful when using the barrels. You can trap enemies under them, but this blocks your path and you can also get trapped yourself. If this happens or you just get stuck in a level unable to complete it, just hit the select button and it will bring you back to the title screen and you can start back over. On the bonus stage, if you manage to find the coin under the first door or brick wall that you destroy, you get an additional 10,000 bonus points. There's only one way to get extra lives in this game, and that is by spelling your character's name by destroying certain structures in order. There is a very good walkthrough on GameFAQs.com with all the 1-Up solutions there. But here's the pattern for the first phase. The last secret is the magical hammer. Just like the 1-Up trick, you have to destroy certain objects in a certain order to obtain it. Once you obtain the magical hammer, all structures now take one hit to destroy, and you can hit enemies with it. The walkthrough on GameFAQs.com has all the magical hammer solutions there. This is the solution to phase 6. So this concludes Jay the Classic Gamer's game review of Wrecking Crew. I have to score this game a very good 7 out of 10. This game isn't for everyone, but it is a fun and challenging game, and a must have for any true classic gamer.